we had taken this assignment yesterday so yesterday we talked about the human goal and made an appraisal of the present state of the society and we saw the need for transformation from the current state to the desired state so there is in transformation required at the individual level and there is transformation required at the societal level and we could see that the societal transformation can take place only with individual transformation so with that we took an assignment reflect on your role your participation reflect on your role your participation in ensuring the human goal in yourself the family society nature and existence so how do you set your goal how what kind of role or participation you try to see for yourself are you able to see this goal within yourself and are you able to see your role in fulfilling this goal then make a list of specific programs taken up by you in this direction so you can also see that to fulfill the human goal what programs i have been taking today in the past what am i doing yeah. and are my programs in line with the human goal or somewhat otherwise this is something to be made out for oneself so we have to make a broad visualization of our current state we have to make a broad visualization of our aspirations our goals and we have to see whether they are they are in line with the human goal or not so if any reflection is there regarding this then you may raise your hand and we can discuss now this slide if you see it means a lot it includes the whole of psychology sociology economics isn't it law so whatever we are trying to do in education today is essentially to ensure the two things personal transformation and societal transformation so personal transformation would mean that the self is awakened the higher level activities are awakened we'll talk about all these activities in detail so at an individual level we need to awaken ourselves and in the process of awakening ourselves we need to live accordingly and that means that we have to participate in the society fulfilling the human goal now when you look at the present state we are able to see that people are not clear the self is deluded people are living with animal consciousness and that's how we can see the state of the society also where the society has become a crowd or a battlefield the focus at the individual level is not for right understanding and right feeling isn't it we have to talk about it separately people are not able to see education is not able to define itself in terms of ensuring right understanding right feeling in the child the focus is not on ensuring prosperity in the feeling the feeling of prosperity in the family rather it is more or less for accumulation and consumption in the society in place of working for a humane society we are mostly trying to struggle for survival we are into wars there are so many revolutions taking place and the newspaper is filled up with such news and in the nature we can see a lot of destruction taking place so this is the present state but we need to transform and for transformation we have to work at the individual level going up to the societal level so within me i have to be clear of my basic aspiration i have to see that happiness is my innate nature and not an external influence when at least i set my goal to ensure happiness from within and not fetch from outside then i start preparing for developing the self if i am not able to set the goal also if my goal is in terms of fetching happiness from outside then this is never going to happen <coughs> so this is something that we started from day one also that have i been able to set at least our goal in terms of making happiness an innate nature and not an external influence 
so then i start looking inward i start looking within me i start looking into my own feelings my thoughts i start looking at my natural acceptance and this way i am able to awaken myself partly and then i participate in the larger order so that complements my awakening and my awakening complements the society and then we'll see that if this starts at least in one generation then the next generation is able to emulate it through education the next generation goes by it and generation by generation we are leading to a humane society and this is quite achievable if you see if we make the education effective if we at least make the people aware of the human goal living in a society this is quite possible so this kind of transformation is desirable for which we all have to work and we are working also in fact we are joining the morning session on a weekend that essentially means that we are working for it isn't it we are serious about it so the human education can ensure personal transformation and the personal transformation can ensure societal transformation now when we look at the current efforts that we are making then we feel that or we are able to see that uh, at the level of teachers there is substantial change at least those who have been consistently joining the workshop meetings morning sessions interacting taking up projects but the next level is to have this kind of participation from students because now uh, after some day people will also start asking that okay the teachers have been able to transform the institutions have been able to transform but what is happening to our students so we have to be little serious about it we have to see how we can evaluate the transformation if at all it has taken place and then how to sustain it so with that only if you see in the first year we implemented the student induction program in the second year this mandatory course was included then the electives were included in some universities and the minor degree has also not been included so it has to be sustained in the students then only it can go to the next generation if you look at that arrow you know see when you say that the personal transformation leading to societal transformation so the personal transformation in the teachers has to percolate in the students one teacher guiding 60 students so that becomes the basis for societal transformation so one important issue to address now is how to sustain this transformation or this change i'll say among the students and we have to really think about it work for it isn't it we have to make some consistent program for it and you can also employ the technology now we can see that earlier we were conducting face to face workshops so we had limited access when we started conducting the workshops online now you see we have this big team across the country the areas where traveling uh, by train would have taken a lot of time we are able to connect within seconds through this online mode and if we employ such techniques further then we can also access our students and we can access them in the long run maybe we become connected to them so the societal transformation has to be uh, looked into in more detail for sustaining the transformation or sustaining the change among the students so we will have to make some more programs for it and we can start thinking about it g so if there is any concern any uh, thing to share any question to ask you can raise your hand so this is something that we had discussed yesterday and we can note down all these things in our journal also whether i am able to see at the level of human goal whether while setting up any goal for myself for my children am i able to map it to the human goal do i see that it is falling in line with the human goal while we are teaching our students and are we able to see that the inputs that we are giving to them is helping them be a part of humane society isn't it we need to see that academics is not really for a job <clears throat> and job is not really for a package and package is not merely for merry making 
for you know, indulgence for getting external sources of happiness more and more no academics is for ensuring a human society for fulfilling the human goal and this can be included in the vision mission objectives of every institution isn't it and we can we are able to see that the institutions which are turning into nodal centers or regional centers they are now thinking about it thinking about such issues seriously whether our vision of the institution is in line with human goal or not are we just here to have maximum research publications um, ensure maximum packages in placement getting maximum admission making students uh, pass most of the competitive examinations or here we are for transforming their lives and transformation essentially means this awakening of the self and in the years to come we can see this kind of visible change in the society this is quite possible yes nice uh, how to manage the time it's a very difficult if i have to plan on work i am able to achieve that task something happen in between in area my goal is unable to achieve in that area so in real life is there if i put theoretically i have to do this job in that area but in practical i am able to achieve that one uh, some disturbance or some other work interfere in that area how to manage the time in the particular area yeah for that you have to set the right priority see we all have limited 24 hours in a day now where are we spending time that is to be made out so that will also mean that when you are setting some goal you have to see whether it is in line with the human goal or not whether it is something that will ensure happiness is your innate nature ensure happiness in continuity so if our goal is already somewhat not in line with human goal not as per our natural acceptance then even though we fulfill that goal we are not going to achieve anything so first of all i'll ensure that my goal is in line with human goal second thing while i am deciding my program in a day then i'll set the priority okay now how much time i have to give for nurturing the body how much time i have to give for protecting the body and how much time i have to give for rightly utilizing the body similarly when i am fulfilling relationships for my relatives and i again have to see whether my time is being spent more for physical facility or for ensuring the right understanding and right feeling in my relatives am i fulfilling their desires which are misguided by preconditioning or sensation or i am trying to draw their attention to the natural acceptance so i have i can have a very consistent program and i can persevere every moment i can see every moment that at a personal level i want to have continuity of happiness and prosperity and at a collective level we want to be happy together prosperous together have relationships based on trust and we have to coexist with the rest of nature this can be very clear we need to have a clear vision for that fine bhaiya yes sir here if you put the timetable for the hod or principal i can follow that one that is no issue but i have to maintain my goal in real life uh, that of uh, i am able to achieve the task that is a problem with me what is your goal to happiness happiness and what is the program for that yes now i am asking you what is the program for happiness uh, so what program uh, are you making for happiness to make others happy myself also happy self and body okay. to persistence in that area 
Now this becomes a circular definition. <laughs> so I have to know <laughs> what program I have to make for happiness because my program for happiness is to ensure happiness in others. Now the question arises then what is happiness for others? And that may mean that to ensure my happiness. So we have to see what program I am making for happiness. Am I able to see that happiness has to be my innate nature and not an external influence? Then I will not try to ensure happiness through programs which are based on preconditionings or sensations. But rather which are based on self-exploration or at least leading to self-exploration. Now you are there in a job you know, and you are discussing there also. So you have to make out the need for physical facility. If you are able to see that the need for physical facility can be fulfilled now because as you shared like your children are also settled now and uh, uh, like you will have to make out the need for yourself now whether you have enough provision for that or not if that is there then when and good if not then i will spend my time to fulfill my need for physical facilities and then i'll choose the right place for it right program for it unless i do that I will not be able to utilize my time rightly. Fine, Bhaiya? Yes, thank you. The here, peer and pressure, there, there is here. That is also in the, I am in, unable to no, achieve. You are coming under peer pressure. See, peer pressure is something that I accept. Mm. Otherwise, I may not accept. I may not be under any kind of pressure by others. Yes. I can make my own program. Isn't it? Yes, yes. Nice, Bhaiya. No, thank you, thank you. I will try it to my level best. Ji. Prashant, Bhaiya. Ji, Namaste, Sabiko. Bhaiya, very nice discussion and it was really the nice assignment daily you are giving, uh, but it is uh, the reflective type of assignment. So I will start with number one, ki what is the goal and what is my planning? So number one is uh, rightly said, yourself means in myself happiness. So I can see happiness is the innateness and as if it is seen and you rightly discussed okay, we are giving the morning uh, time and all the time we are trying to be happy without any uh, uh, external, uh, this one, influence. Then secondly, for the family, uh, really it has been improved my prosperity, my view and my family's view. So slowly it is being increased for others also, but I am very much sure that prosperity means it is just more than the required, means producing more than the required. That, that it can be seen very nicely while cooking or while preparing or while bringing even vegetables also. So this can be seen that the meaning of prosperity is slowly improving for myself. Then as far as society is concerned, so I am bearing in the society wherever, wherever I am working. So for uh, means this is uh, with the trust, fearlessness, and for the mutual happiness. Uh, I can give today's example. Today is the holiday, but still I will start for my college for the uh, nurturing of the uh, this one uh, nature and plantation and what the care I am taking along with my twenty number of uh, this one colleagues. So I will be moving by 7.30 and will be there by 11. So yeah, this is all. Uh, and the specific program is that if now I have uh, determined. So to be in touch with this all you all, uh, uh, this UHU team and try to develop ourselves. And whenever I go, at least I speak something about these points. Whenever in my family or wherever I'm going. So uh, this is my specific program. So to develop uh, self and to others also. So thank you, Bhaiya. Please. Thanks nice, so nice, Bhaiya. Let me inform uh, the team here that uh, Prashant Bhaiya has been planting trees whenever he gets time. So by now, yeah. Bhaiya, how many trees have you planted? Uh, Bhaiya, by this time, in last uh, 30 years, I was at three, four colleges. It is around uh, 17,000. But presently, where I am working for last five, six years in Nagpur, it is around 1,700. 
means the yearly I'm planning uh, one uh, two hundred around. Two hundred means with the help of of course students and uh, taking uh, care of them on Sundays or Saturdays, particularly Saturdays. G. Nice, nice. Yeah. So where do you plant the trees? Uh, By the road. In, no, no. Boundaries of the colleges. I am having twelve acres of land for my college. So boundary uh, double line means first two three feet uh, first layer and second layer along that means when, uh, along the periphery of the college and along the outside also and sometimes in villages also means my college is near uh, some villages there so we adopted that village under Unnat Bharat Abhiyan and we are planting there also. <laughs> nice, yeah. So. Do you also make some program to ensure that the plants are properly nurtured and protected? Yes, yes, yes. We are taking help of the Gram Panchayat and the local people also. They are providing us the, uh, what that is called as, uh, protecting uh, this, still uh, this one, cage while planting. And we'll see that the plant itself is somewhat grown up plant. Uh, either we are taking help of uh, some CSR or with the help of college fund or some scheme of the government and then it is the again very important thing is in our campus whatever with the plants we have grown they are given the name of the student it is called a dattak he is giving his name and whenever he comes after graduation he also find he has done some uh, mutual prosperity Jiviya. Very nice, Diya. So, this is a specific program by you. Quite commendable. Very nice, Diya. You told me you prepare some documentary also, but I will do some photographs are there. But I am doing. And now I am in relation with this Ganesh Bhaiya also for Vardha. We are planning a planting tree in June, month of June. There is also a very huge land. They are preparing the low gang pit there. So, we are in touch with Nagpur volunteers. Myself, Ajay Bhaiya, Jasmine Bidi. And uh, here, Adaya Tekri also, 70 kilometers. Ji Bhaiya, thank you. Ji. Very nice, Bhaiya. Nice. So, we have to see, are we into some specific programs also, which can fulfill the human goal? Like Prashant Bhaiya was sharing that he has been planting trees and he has planted with, with his team more than 70,000 trees. And in the last six years, he has planted 1,700. So very nice. If even 50% of these trees survive, then you have done a good job for the nature. Very nice, Bhaiya. Bhaiya, out of this 1700, around 1500 are there as, as it is. Means very, um, miss, um, they are there since the care, weekly, daily care, our students are providing. So rate means uh, out of 1600, 50% is uh, 800. But it is almost 80%, you can say, 80 to 90% in this college. This is new college, in the Government College of Engineering, Nagpur, from last six, seven years. 2016, it has been established. So it is there, Bhaiya. Rate is very high. Thank you, Bhaiya. Very nice, Bhaiya. Very nice. Ji, so we had some sharing regarding the assignment shared yesterday. Now we can go to the content. And we can keep reflecting. Have we been able to participate in some specific program in our life, which is there in terms of fulfilling the human goal? <clears throat> in fact, in the month of June, two specific programs are taken up on a very wide scale. One is planting of trees, because environment is celebrated on June 5, and then yoga. So people become more conscious of health, and they start practicing yoga, that is regulating the postures of the body. And many times we have a mandate from the government also for the institution that you have to do it consistently for one month and record it every day and put up on some platform. Maybe they'll share some Google form or something. So this is also good, ensuring the feeling of self-regulation in the students and the faculty on a very wide scale. You can see it ensures health as well as cuts a lot of expenses that people might have to do for fighting with diseases. Nice. So having discussed this, now we'll go to understand the human being. 
we have been talking about in our introductory workshops and the basic two workshops. We'll take a closer look at it. And as we go along, we'll see that in exercises one and two, we are going to talk about it again. So we'll revise this content that we have discussed so far. If any question is there, then please do share and we'll also be taking assignments. Ji, bhaiya. So when I look at myself, I can see that there are two entities. One is me and the other is body. And I am there with the body. This body is a material entity. I am a conscious entity. And through exercises, we'll also see that I become aware of my being by looking at my activities. I become aware of the body by reading the sensation from the body. So I can, like this proposal has come to me because somewhat in my thought also that yes, I and body both are there. Now we can directly observe it also. How do I make out? And in exercise two, specifically, we'll try to see whether I and body are the same or different. You know, how are they different? How can make we make out the difference between the self and the body? All those things we'll try to study in depth. Now, looking at the needs, we can see that the needs of the self are different from the needs of the body. Again, at the level of thought, we may articulate, but I have to see exactly at any point of time, what do I want and what is needed for the body? So presently, at this moment, you can observe, you know, what is your need at this moment? And what is the need of the body? Try to observe. So you can see that my need put all together is basically happiness. Isn't it? I basically want to be happy. And the need of the body is physical facility. It could be in terms of food or clothes or shelter. If I'm walking in the morning in fresh air, this air is also need of the body. Isn't it? So the need of the body is physical facility. And my need is continuous. I want to be happy every moment. So find it out. What am I looking for within me? And do I want it every moment or only on some occasions? And then what is the need of the body? For example, when I'm walking in the morning you know, in fresh air, so this cool breeze could be needed for the body, but temporarily, not all the time. Now, after some time, we'll have breakfast, then we'll have lunch. It is required from time to time. Presently, when we are in our houses, we require one kind of cloth, one kind of cloth. Now, when we go to the office, we require another kind of cloth. So the cloth also keeps on changing. It is required from time to time. We are there in our houses right now, but we leave our houses for job. So let the houses be there, but we are not trying to be confined in the houses. So you know, we leave the houses and go to the office. So the need for the house also is temporary. It's not that I wanted to be happy while I was there in my house and I need, leave that need for happiness and then go outside. No, it is there with me all the time. But house is not there with me all the time. The food on the dining table is not there with me all the time, isn't it? So I can look at it and find out that it is temporary. And whenever we talk about some temporary need of the body, we can look at the quantity also, which is required in a limited quantity. Whatever be the physical facility, whether is it for nurturing the body or protecting the body or rightly utilizing the body, it is all required in limited quantity. But my needs are qualitative. If I want it, I want every moment. If I do not want it, I do not want it any moment. This is being qualitative. Now here, uh, since some questions are asked frequently about the quality, let me clarify one thing. That being qualitative and having quality are two different things. My needs are qualitative. It means if I want it, I want it every moment. Else I don't want it any moment. This is being qualitative. When we use the word qualitative here, it is in that sense. 
there could be quality of the physical facility for example the quality of food the quality of fabric in the cloth the quality of plaster in the house the quality of performance of engine in the car they are also talk about quality but it is again related to the proportion of various quantities which make that commodity that physical facility so qualitative and quality are two different things i think we are able to see this when we say the need of the self is qualitative it means if i want it i want it every moment else i do not want it any moment this is being qualitative but when we talk about the quality of physical facility it is related to the quantity of the ingredients that make the facility is this part clear if any question is there you can raise your hand and ask i'll not take those examples which you have been taking in the workshops we are acquainted with them now whatever physical facility i use for the body it is physiochemical isn't it it is made of material uh things now for me when i see my need that it is happiness in continuity i can see that it can be continuous only when it is based on right understanding and right feeling so my needs are fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling physical facilities don't fulfill my need they fulfill the need of the body and body is my need in what terms to use it as an instrument for fulfilling the need for right understanding right feeling which can ensure happiness this linkage has to be clear physical facility for the body body for me for ensuring right understanding right feeling so the purpose is to ensure right understanding right feeling for which the body is working as an instrument and my need is fulfilled by right understanding right feeling only isn't it now we can also look at the activity <clears throat> and we are going to look at the activity in detail so in exercise 1 will be primarily focusing on the activities in the self in exercise 2 will be focusing on the activities in the body and then also see how my activities are related to the activities of the body so when i look at my activity i can see that there is imagination in me and the imagination is made up of desire thought expectation so i have certain desires i am analyzing and comparing i am also selecting and testing so these are happening in me and not the body in the body we can see the physical chemical activities like breathing is there heartbeat is there you know blood circulation is there and there are some activities like walking talking eating standing sitting these activities are also there so you'll see that there are three kinds of activities one kind of activity is something which is happening in the self isn't it completely so this desire thought expectation is entirely in the self there is another kind of activity which is there in the body which is not in the self but i have consented for it for example breathing it is there in the body heart beat it is there in the body blood circulation is there in the body and i have consented for it so let it be in that fashion if i want to raise my breathing i can do that <clears throat> if i want to change the pace of heart beat i can do that if i want to regulate the blood circulation i can do that so it is happening there in the body and i have consented for it with my consent with my acceptance it is happening and the third kind of activity is where i and body both have to participate so when i am talking to you i am deciding the words and i am utilizing the body to speak when i am looking at the slides then the sensation i am getting from the body and then i am giving a meaning to it so these three kinds of activities are there one entirely in the self the body may be influenced on that account that is possible so i am thinking something it can affect my body that is fine so one kind of activity is that which is happening in the self the second kind of activity is there in the body and it is there with my acceptance and the third kind of activity is where i and body both have to participate 
I think this part is clear. Now you can see that the needs of the body are temporary, happening from time to time. But my need, my uh, activities are continuous. When I look at my activity, for example, examination, imagination, <clears throat> imagination is continuous. I have some desire or the other every moment. I am analyzing every moment. I am comparing every moment. Sometimes we feel that there is no thought. But essentially it is not the state of no thought. It so happens no, that we call something as thought when there is some turmoil in the thought. <laughs> we have to make an extra effort to analyze or compare. Then we call it as a thought. Otherwise something is happening naturally within me. I do not look at it as an activity also. So thought is continuous. Expectation is continuous. So the selecting and testing is taking place in me all the time. But at the level of body, we can see that the activities are there. Okay. But the atoms and molecules which make that activity, their constitution is changing. Isn't it? And that's how put together, we can see that the activities are taking temporarily from time to time. Now we can also look at the response. When I look at the body, I can see that the response is there in terms of recognizing and fulfilling. Recognizing means recognizing the relationship. And fulfilling means you know, acting accordingly. So we have taken so many examples. If you remember in the workshop, we take an example of a needle being kicked in the body. And when we take it as a syringe, then we have one kind of response. When we not take it as a syringe, it we have another kind of response. And that kind of response is coming from the self. In the body, only physiochemical changes are taking place. Recognizing and fulfilling is there. If the needle is sharp, it goes inside the body. If the needle is blunt, it does not go inside the body. Now I assume whether I have to allow or disallow. So in the body, there is no such decision making. You see that when a doctor is coming and pricking the syringe also, no? So we try to sulk, we try to you know, somewhat move back. Now that decision is also not coming from the body. It is coming from me. Isn't it? And generally you see that when that needle goes down, it goes inside the body. <laughs> so generally we will close our eyes and you know, uh, shrink it. That would be a common response that we can see. That is also my choice. I am doing it like that. It's not the body doing it by itself. So, in the body, there is only activity of recognizing and fulfilling. But within me, at least assuming is there. With that only, I am recognizing and fulfilling. I am assuming something for my body, for the syringe, for the other person, for the rest of nature. And then only, I am deciding this way or that way. Now the part that remains is knowing. And that is what we are here for in the morning session. To know the existence as it is. So I want to know. I know, want to know myself. I want to know my relationship. I want to know the rest of nature. I want to know all that exists. And it's not only me. Even the child wants to know. You will see that if a person comes to your house, <clears throat> the child will ask, who is this person? We tell him that this person is Mr. So and so. Where has he come from? He has come from Delhi. Where is Delhi? You again give some response. And he'll keep on asking. After some time, we'll feel that now we're getting irritated. You know, as if some engine is getting heated up. You are getting irritated. And they will shout on the child. So don't you have some any other work? You are all the time pestering me with all these nuisance, nonsense questions. And the child is now aware that, okay, now this person doesn't have any response, any answer to my questions. And now I should keep silent. So the child also wants to know. And it is not the body of the child, it is the self of the child. You just see that even a small child is there, no? If you put something in front, the child will look at it with inquisitiveness. What is it? So generally, the very small child, he or she will put the thing in the mouth. 
it is also an effort to know what it is you know by touching it by sensing it through tongue by holding it so every self has this desire to know this is somewhat innate to the self and the desire to know is there in the self not the body this part is clear if any question is there please raise your hand nice nirupam ji is saying that i was named as a question girl ji uh bhaiya yeah. as you were saying about uh, this you know uh, the need of the self that is there are variety of things as you said injection when we are taking so can we take it as fear is also a feeling uh, through which like when the needle is about to prick uh, we just uh, you know move ourselves a little bit can this also be taken as a uh, need of the self say it again didi um like i said like as you gave an example uh, in the prayer just a few min a uh, few uh, minutes ago uh, that is when uh, the needle is being pricked to us for an injection uh, so uh, what happens is uh, we move a little bit so yeah. uh, so that's more due to the fear that is something is going to prick my body yeah so can so fear also true. be a part of uh, uh, you know um, this kind of a feeling of self yes yes fear is there in the self not the body it is a feeling yes so quality matlab again that is a qualitative in nature we cannot measure it is yeah, it that way we can for example with fear you know hmm. what what i am getting for how long i am getting those thoughts that can be hmm. measured for example Achha. i was in fear for four hours out of a simple hmm. incident and that could hmm. be there for example i am going by the road side and i saw some accident hmm. isn't it hmm. you know, i could feel afraid of that and that of fear may continue for years together yes you will note one example like napoleon was there no when he yes, was a yes. small child one yes. cat jumped on his chest while he was sleeping mm-hmm. and scratched mm-hmm. him badly and okay. it became such a kind of deep fear in napoleon that when mm-hmm. he attacked russia this dictator of russia was knowing that napoleon fears cats so he mm-hmm. sent the battalion in such a way that the front two rows were only carrying cats they were like fearful cats and they were moving ahead and napoleon got afraid he got so afraid that he lost his control and he finally lost the battle so it can be so deep yes yes and that is a feeling of your one self only pardon uh, that's a feeling of self only like yourself yeah, yeah, gets so only. much yes. hurt uh, yes. isn't so uh, so bhaiya in cases of you know language abuse sometimes like uh, when we say uh, like he you see there are three terms like he died he passed away he expired so supposing we are using that this person died or we say that he lost his job uh, or uh, he was uh, and then we say he was kicked out of the job so mm-hmm. these also can be these terminologies also uh, you know has some impact on our self and uh, it also shows disrespect yeah so essentially the feeling has to be there if somebody is no more what word we are going to use so if we are clear about the continuity of the self if you see in our uh, like tradition also east or west you know you can see that people have accepted uh, continuity of the self that's why you'll see that nowadays on this social media generally one common word that is used is rip rest in peace so yes, you are there yes. the body is not there Okay. Isn't it? So generally, say rest in peace. Yes, yes. Or something similar, which denotes the continuity of the self. Now we are talking about fear. So it is qualitative in the sense that I do not want it, and I do not want it any moment. Yes. What yes. I want is peace. What I want is harmony. What I want yes. is trust, and that I want every moment. So if I want some feeling. 
it is naturally acceptable i want it every moment and if i do not want it i do not want it any moment now this is not the case with facilities yes yes isn't it maybe we want to uh, sit in ac for some time but not after that so we want it quantitatively for some time you know at some temperature some quantity of uh, cool air that is required so that is quantitative food clothes whatever we say but here it is qualitative in the sense that is somewhat like binary if i want it i want it every moment if i do not want it i do not want it any moment like this so if the feeling is naturally acceptable i want it every moment if not i don't want it any moment like all these ill feelings or and you know, a feelings that we want or uh, do, uh, do not want to have at all so we want to get rid out of that get rid of that yes yes right 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 ji bhaiya so similar is the use of terms also that we use so certain terms are not naturally acceptable so uh, this kind of a thing like i would not like to use uh, for someone that he died so i would think that it is very much rough instead of that i would say he passed away that would be more refined and if you look at this word pass away it means that mm -hmm. you know he has passed away from this life he is there but yes. he is no longer with the body yes yes isn't it Jeez. yes bhaiya <laughs> thank you so much bhaiya thank you nice to be so i want to ask one thing that these thoughts that always come in our mind sir actually so this uh, thoughts are actually coming in our mind or it is a activity of the brain um and um, and we must have to be aware of our thoughts so that um, we are in harmony that means sir i want to ask you that uh, should we have a uh, i mean a power to control our thoughts so that uh, we are in um, harmony with ourselves first before going to the other levels so no need for control the need is there for right understanding and right feeling see these thoughts are in contradiction they are in disharmony because we are not able to see the basis of the thought if the basis of the thought is understanding of relationship uh, harmony in the nature and submergence then the thoughts are going to be guided by right understanding they are always going to be in harmony those thoughts would be devoted towards ensuring the right kind of program for fulfillment of human goal presently the problem is that we are not working for right understanding right feeling and that's how we are in disharmony our thoughts have contradictions conflicts second thing is that the thoughts are entirely in me not the body so they are not in the brain the brain is a part of the body yes when do i when i think i take the help of brain that is possible but the thought is going on inside me not the body not the brain okay sir thank you sir nice nice day the one question is um, maya this uh, protection of the body so many times fear is there for the protection of the body like um, uh, like evolution i mean when we say uh, in previous conditions when human was evolving he was in jungle and all that and he wants to protect his body and so this kind of emotion might have come and many times it has protected him from different things um so one of the question was some of these feelings like say pain uh we associated the feeling with the word pain but it's again there is a condition it's a condition where you are uh, your body may get harmed like for example uh, there is a cut uh, on your body due to something say rock or something and then there is this uh, sensation and we call it as a pain it's not very comfortable sensation and then so uh, we get accustomed that okay this is a pain and this is not maybe good for protecting my body and um, that's why maybe you know we uh, that's kind of conditioning also may happen that okay um, 
so sometimes these uh, feelings like uh, or i would say sensations i mean fear is again called as feeling but uh, can we can we call it as a protection for the body and um, uh, they are helpful or rather uh, they are yeah, useful you see a nice observation and it is very interesting also you see that all these feelings which are even not acceptable to us naturally have a purpose yes isn't it yes so yes bhaiya exactly uh. yeah so let us look at it closely so basically we want to protect our body presently the feeling of fear is helping me protect my body but it is not acceptable to me naturally so then yes. i start exploring that how can i protect my body with a naturally acceptable feeling and yes. then i am able to explore the feeling of self regulation so i can protect my body out of fear also i can protect my body with a feeling of self regulation also now if you look at the animal or a person living with animal consciousness mm. one will protect the body out of fear so yes. if you look at look at a person with animal consciousness so he or she assuming oneself to be the body and assuming the existence of the being yes uh, only limited to the body will protect the body out of fear but yes. a person with right understanding will do it out with feeling of self regulation that this is my instrument and i need to protect it i need to preserve it so that you know it can be fit for use right utilization yeah so the fundamental difference is assuming that i am body and then from there that assumption whatever uh, feelings arise i mean that's the difference between fear and self protection is uh, basically i am self and then my body is a instrument but yes the instrument is very important and i want to use it for right utilization and so i need to protect that is a regu- self regulation in some sense yes. right okay so the purpose has to be clear and yes. an animal also protects the body a human yes. being living with animal consciousness will also protect the body and a human being living with human consciousness will also protect the body yes mm. isn't it yes but the programs may be different a person with human consciousness will protect it with right understanding with a feeling of self regulation yes. one with animal consciousness will do it out of fear assuming oneself to be the body and mm. if you look at an animal isn't it so there we can see that the animal in the animal the assumption is also not that much developed it is just doing it yes of course mm. it is protecting the body out of fear so if you look at the conduct of an animal generally we say that four traits can be observed you know mm. so mm. like food sleep fear and sex all these four things ahar nidra bhan method mm. so by that the animal is protecting itself and uh, sustaining the survival generation by generation that is something which can be seen in the human being also to begin with but with right understanding all these traits get transformed yes hmm. okay bhaiya so it's important to note the sensations and uh, know the purpose and then respond to those sensation so yes we can't yes. just ignore them because they are there for uh, the protection of the body or uh, Yes. Right yes. So if my like say toe gets hurt while walking, I do yes. take a note of it and then do something to protect my toe. It's not that yes. I'll ignore it. Exactly. But if I'm doing it with the fear that oh my life is gone, you know, now this toe <laughs> is hurt, then I'm unhappy. Yes. 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 That is so affecting our final purpose. I mean, the ultimate purpose of being happy yes. continues. thank you bhaiya thank you nice bhaiya i noticed myself that uh, uh, in myself there are two persons are uh, uh, discussing and uh, one says yes and one says no so uh, i think one out of that one has right understanding and other has maybe uh, not that one and uh, sometimes i feel or uh, my well wishers are advising me that uh, you are focus on one work not uh, all of the work but uh, at that time i explained them that uh, our body that is hands legs 
eyes, head, they are all independent and they are working uh, simultaneously. So why can't we can do the work? Uh, of course, the focus work is there. So I think I am in that dilemma that what, uh, what uh, we can say that uh, it is a focused work. So in place of saying that our parts of the body are independent, we can say that they coexist. They are self-regulated. Yes. So we have to work in a self-regulated manner, yes. self-organized manner, not independent manner. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I think just I will get the one example <clears throat> that uh, just now that election has uh, uh, completed here and uh, our institute has been taken over by uh, obvious authorities and uh, uh, my research work is going on and one mind mind says that don't uh, worry you put it all that in the institute and uh, do when the vacation opens and one mind says no you take all the things at your home and do that thing and uh, continue the research work so uh, in that case uh, I have to work at my from my place. So this, uh, what uh, uh, I have taken decision is right. <laughs> now that you have to make out. First of all, these are not two minds. Basically, we have two options, and we keep on comparing the options. And sometimes we are not able to uh, make the decision in a limited time. So whenever you get into such situation, ask yourself, what do I want? Yeah. Yes. So whether you have to conduct research during vacation or you have to conduct it now also at home. So you ask yourself, what is the purpose behind that? Yeah. So if the purpose behind the yeah. research, you merely to get some publications and out of publication, get something from outside. Isn't it? It is one kind of purpose. But if the yeah. purpose behind the research is to fulfill the human goal, to do something you know, for the fulfillment of human goal it could be another kind of purpose so if you have this kind of purpose for fulfillment of the human goal then the program can be continuous but if the purpose is otherwise then you see that even if i execute that program it is not going to fulfill me in continuity yeah nice Bhaiya. so we'll conclude now okay. the assignment would be shared on the group based on this coexistence of self and body.